Welcome to Tech Brothers Dame. In this video, we are going to answer this question. Which IR will you use if you need to read the data from on-premise network to the Azure cloud? So think about a scenario. These people are asking, hey, we have a SQL install on our on-premises and we have Oracle install on our on-premises and we also create some CSV files on our on-premises network share. And we would like to read this all the data from SQL, Oracle, CSV files and load to the Azure cloud. Which IR will we be using in this case? So our simple and easy answer is going to be self-hosted IR. So let me show you a little bit more about that. If you need to talk, maybe they will ask you some further question, how you create it. And, uh, you know, uh, maybe they want to have a little discussion about it. So at least uh, you can uh, kind of guide them in the, that direction. So you will tell them you will go to the integration run times under the manage tab. And uh, there you have a option of creating new one. You will be selecting self-hosted IR there. And then uh, you will be select in a self hosted IR exactly like that here and uh, let's read this uh, information uh, so it will also help you to remember a few things uh, use this uh, for running data moment external and uh, pipeline activities in uh, an uh, on-premises uh, private network by installing the integration runtime. So what we have to do, we have to install our self-hosted IR software on the on-premises network computer and then we will be able to read the data from the on-premises sources such as SQL or Oracle or DB2 and CSV files. Um, note, data flows uh, are only supported on Azure integration runtime. You can use a self-hosted IR uh, runtime to store the data on the cloud storage and then uh, use data flows to transmit it. There is a one uh, activity called the data flow. With the data flow, there is a there is a lot of things like joining the data between two different file sources. Maybe you want to do lookup, maybe condition split and all those kind of different uh, activities are available. Available. So sometime we need to use the data flow to clean the data and uh, uh, you know um, do some transformation on the data uh, by using the data flow. So data flow is not supported by the self-hosted IR. This is a good point actually if you will tell them, hey, data flow in the Azure Data Factory does not uh, support uh, uh, by the uh, self-hosted IR. So in this case, what we have to do, we have to read the data from uh, on-premises uh, by using copy activity, write the data to the blob storage, and then uh, we can use uh, the data flow that will be used in uh, Azure IR uh, uh, to load the data from, you know, from uh, once we stage the data in the blob storage. So this is the exactly they are talking about. Okay, now once you select the self hosted IR is going to happen, uh, you're going to hit next and it is going to ask you the name. So I'm going to leave the name as it is and then you're going to go ahead and hit create. Once you do that, uh, it is giving, giving you some information. You can always uh, tell the person who asked you interview, there will be a couple of keys created. Uh, we have to download the software and then install it. Uh, and once we install it, we have to provide this uh, one of the key. And uh, that's how we will make connection between our Azure Data Factory and our on-premises uh, uh, network. Uh, now, also you can explain them, hey, there is a, there are four max node uh, you can uh, add to the self-hosted IR and uh, this is really good, especially when it comes to the uh, load balancing and uh, failovers. Uh, so in this case, uh, at least uh, two nodes are suggested. If one node goes down, at least you have a second node on on-premises uh, that will be taking care of execution of pipelines and all that. Uh, also, if you're running a lot of uh, pipelines, uh, having multiple nodes help because it will work as a load balancer. Now, uh, you can also tell them uh, these self-hosted IRs can be auto-updated uh, and there is an option to do that or we can do manually. Uh, you know, whenever uh, the new version comes uh, and also it, it can be shared uh, across multiple uh, data factories um, and uh, you have the links here uh, the list of the uh, if you will be sh sharing uh, you will be seeing the uh, self-hosted IRs uh, and other data factories under the links. Uh, okay, so that's uh, pretty much it. I don't want to take a uh, hundred of hours on this uh, interview question. So your short and sweet uh, answer is uh, we will be using self-hosted IR to read the data from our on-premises uh, uh, data sources uh, 
to the cloud now um, if you want to see it, all the details and all that uh, how to create the self hosted IR how to uh, do the in the clustering mode like multiple nodes and all that I have the videos in the Azure Data Factory tutorial please watch them and they will be very helpful thank you very much for watching please subscribe my channel and I will see you guys in the next video